Hi, Professor Carol J.M. here. What does the science tell us that you need to do in order to be successful in your math class? That's coming right up. So I want to cover the differences between a successful and an unsuccessful math student. We'll see what the studies tell us those differences are. And I'm going to finish up talking about the very real distinction between taking a math class in high school and taking a math class in college. The scientific method is a way to ask questions and answer them by making observations and doing experiments. Experiments have to be reproducible to be good science. They should be able to be duplicated. Reproducibility is a key principle of science and it's a gold standard uh, for science. It means Someone in New Zealand or someone in India, someone in Manhattan can conduct the same set of observations or perform the same experiment and get very closely to the same result. And when this kind of evidence accumulates, that is what provides us with scientific evidence. It's powerful and it's much stronger than my opinion or your opinion. There's a researcher and professor named Carol Dweck at Stanford University and she's done the major work to discover what's one of the very key differences between success and failure in a lot of fields and of course she's also looked at what makes a difference between success and failure in math and your mind makes a very big difference and I don't mean IQ. Successful students have a different mindset from unsuccessful students Unsuccessful students have a fixed mindset. They believe that you're born with inherent abilities that you can never change. So if you weren't born with the basketball gene, you're never going to be good at basketball. If you weren't born with the math gene, you're not going to be good at math. So if you have this belief, can you see that this engenders a certain kind of helplessness? If you believe that your ability is fixed and there's nothing you can do, why try? So it sets up a cascading set of self-reinforcing experiences and habits. If you have a fixed mindset, if you're thinking, I, I don't have the math gene, I can't do math, I want you to consider rethinking this. Unsuccessful students have a negative attitude, which stems from their fixed mindset. They also try to do everything at once. They're much more prone to procrastinate, although we are all prone to procrastinate sometimes. They have a very low tolerance for frustration. I want you to work on building up your tolerance for frustration. This is a useful skill to have in your life anyway. Math can be frustrating. You should expect that and roll with it. Um, don't get too crazy if you get too upset or angry. Step away from the equation, calm down, go for a three or five minute walk or something and come back and try it again. That's another thing that unsuccessful students don't do so well. They give up very, very easily. They don't take feedback well. They get very emotional instead of calmly accepting the feedback and going, oh, that's a way for me to get better. So if you recognize yourself in this fixed mindset, I'm asking you to work on that throughout this semester. It'll really help you, not only in this class, but in all your classes. <music> Successful math students, on the other hand, have a growth mindset. They know that everybody varies in abilities and aptitudes but they strongly believe that if they just work hard enough, they can achieve what they want to achieve. And applied to math, they know that if they work hard enough, they can succeed in the math that they have to do in order to get to their goal. This growth mindset engenders a feeling of responsibility. Unlike the fixed mindset, People with a growth mindset know it's their responsibility to work hard and that if they don't succeed, it's not because they're genetic difficulty. It's because they probably didn't work hard enough. They have a positive attitude because of this. They just know they can do it if they work hard and 
they take things step by step. I want you to work towards a growth mindset in math. You can do this class. You may have to work pretty hard. Your neighbor might not have to work as hard as you do. You know, math is very cumulative. So if you miss something way back, you'll have to go back and figure it out now. In high school, you're able to complete 75% of the work inside the classroom and only a small amount in homework and outside the classroom and self-learning. In college, it's exactly the reverse. You do about 25% of the work inside the classroom and almost all of it, 75%, you have to do on your own outside of the classroom. Big difference. So to finish up, in order to succeed, you need to convince yourself that you can do it. It's actually pretty darned important. Let me share a personal story with you. I didn't think I could do math when I was young. In fact, my first degree was in psychology, partly because I didn't think I could handle science. I went back in my late 20s to school and had a different attitude and saw much better success. So I know what I'm telling you is true from personal experience. Studies also show that if you're kind to yourself when you don't meet your willpower or procrastination goals, don't beat yourself up, just forgive yourself and move on, you're much more likely to improve. Embrace the successful student personality. A lot of studies show that students that tell themselves all the time, I'm a successful math student, I've got to study because I'm a successful math student, do much better in the class. And enjoy yourself. This is fun stuff. Yeah.